Welcome back to Legacy Builders. My name is Brian Delaney, and in this episode, I wanna share with you the story behind my new book, The Entrepreneur Evangelist. God told me to write this book almost 20 years ago after I died and came back to life. Let's go. All right, so Brian, your book, Entrepreneur Evangelist, just came out to the public. Today, let's talk about where did the story for that book really begin? So really, at the core of it, I would say it started, um, you know, growing up and then, you know, my family, the family dynamic that I grew up in, right? Uh, but then beyond that, it really started when I died and came back to life, right? So 2003, found myself on death's doorstep, um, came out of the coma that I was in for eight hours, and the doctor rushed to my bedside singing, he's alive, right? So you know, coming, you know, waking up from that experience, not knowing where I was, quite frankly, and just seeing white everything, white doctors, white everything, white room, white sheets, and just being in this, you know, really surreal experience, waking up from that moment. Um, and then the doctor saying, son, you're a living miracle. In my 30 years of being a doctor, I've never seen anyone in your sphere of condition live, yet alone be able to even comprehend what I'm saying. Because my blood alcohol level was 0.39 and 0.4, I was dead. So really, if you think about it, I was one shot from death. And the words that rang true uh, to me at that moment were was the doctor when he said, you know, son, my 30 years of being a doctor, never seen anyone with your spirit condition live, yet alone be able to comprehend what I'm saying. Uh, there's no other explanation, but, you know, this is a miracle. Um, God must have a plan and purpose for your life. And so... That was really the catalyst to uh, drive me into seeking my purpose, finding out, okay, why was my life saved, spared? Why was my life saved? Um, driving back to campus, you know, the little hole in the wall church that said, you know, God has a plan and purpose for your life was again, another confirmation uh, that God wanted me to pay attention uh, to the, his desires for my life rather than my own desires, right? And it couldn't have been you know, more clear. So from there, I, you know, I went on a journey to find my purpose, transferred to Clearwater Christian College, uh, which was great, but extremely fundamental rule driven school um, that just had so many ridiculous rules. And then from there, uh, transferred and went to Liberty University. And it was during uh, what's called Spiritual Emphasis Week. Ironically, it was Spiritual Emphasis Week, where um, I went through this process where God was showing me at the time through the speakers and through, you know, Spiritual Emphasis Week at Liberty University is absolutely amazing. Uh, first of all, you've got uh, leaders, you've got business leaders, you've got, um, at least this is what the experience was like when I was there. So you had business leaders, you had spiritual leaders, pastors, you had missionaries, you had people that are in the field um, every single day, and they came to you basically share a word, share their testimony, share what was going on, globally. And so imagine the whole week is just dedicated to spiritual worship conferences. I mean, the whole nine yards, speakers galore. Um, it was basically like a festival uh, for all things spiritual. And so I remember sitting there, I was listening to this guy by the name of David Nasser, who wrote a book called A Call to Die. And he talked about his journey of his salvation and the things that he had to let go of. And during that week, God was impressing it upon me that I needed to forgive my dad. That I, like, I was harboring bitterness, anger, frustration, um, basically negative energy uh, towards my dad. And that I needed to go to him. I needed to approach him. I needed to man up. And I needed to ask him for forgiveness. Now, that would be really contrary to, you know, thought. Right. Think about it. You know, I was in a place where, you know, uh, my dad had chose a certain way of being and also chose certain actions throughout my teenage years um, that left me angry, bitter, frustrated, pissed off, angry, all of these emotions uh, because of the way that he chose to show up. And in this moment, God was showing me that, no, Brian, you need to man up. You need to forgive him completely. You need to be the one that takes proactive action. Because he's not, this is your opportunity to step up. And so I, I remember God revealed to me the plan before I actually executed on it, which was forgive, um, 
forgive completely, receive openly, and then share freely. And I'm going to break that down here. So what that was, I, I call that God's formula that unlocks relationships. And for me, it unlocked my relationship with my dad. It also unlocked my relationship with God and able to, for, uh, in a way that I was able to more vividly hear him speak, more vividly understand God's, God's voice, which is so, so, so vital and so important, which is really the core message within my book. That's one of the major core messages that I believe that God wants me to get out to other people uh, across the world. And so I remember, uh, you know, when I had to man up and forgive completely, I remember it being awkward. I remember it being like, no, I don't want to do that. I remember it be, uh, feelings prompted within me, uh, overwhelming prompting and urgency that, no, you need to do this. You need to man up. So I remember calling my dad and I said, dad, please forgive me for this. Please forgive me for that. Please forgive me for this, that, and the next thing. And uh, you know, my dad was, you know, quiet, silent, listened. He, you know, was absorbing that, you know, what I was saying to him. And, you know, shortly thereafter, my dad began to cry and began to, you know, uh, he, you know, he began to ask for forgiveness as well. And I, and I, and at that, at that time, I was literally at, in a place where I was able to, uh, you know, rather than put up my defenses or rather than like, you know, shield, I was able to, I was able to receive it because that's what God told me to do when I was going into the situation. So when I was going into the situation, think about it. God said, forgive completely, receive openly. And so as I was going into it, I already knew, uh, part of the, what, the, what was going to transpire, but, uh, but obviously I wasn't sure how that was going to happen. Um, so I knew that my dad, something was going to break, something was going to happen. And what really broke and happened was, um, it was the, the barrier between my dad and I. Right. And it was almost as if there was uh, the analogy that I use is imagine being like chained in a room um, in shackles. Um, that's ultimately what it was like being in a place of unforgiveness, being in a place of being bitter, anger, frustrated, pissed off, all these negative emotions. So being in that place is what was keeping me in change, keeping holding me back from really, truly experiencing an abundant life with my dad and the relationship with him. But beyond that, it was, you know, in, in life with, with God and with other people. And, um, and so, um, I did that. Uh, and then right after that, like it was as if, you know, the dam broke, uh, I began to receive revelation. I began to see more promptings. Things became more crystal clear. Uh, God began to give me visions, uh, it, while I was sleeping, while I was walking, <laughs> while I was daydreaming, at all times of the day, I would begin to receive visions. And one of the uh, assignments I was given was to write a book and uh, to put the formula into the book and to then uh, put the story into the book and then release the book and share the book with the world. He then began, began to give me visions, both sleeping and walking daytime visions of stadiums full of people, thousands of people, tens of thousands of people, literally, you know, 25, 30, 40, 50,000 people in different stadiums and different uh, sets and scenes from indoor stadiums to even outdoor stadiums where, where I began to get these visions. And it wasn't something that I was envisioning, you know, like when you have a vision for your life and you begin to think about what that looks like, you have your own vision, right? These were visions that were being given to me. Uh, in that moment. And so I was receiving these visions. I was just seeing them. And it's not that I ever had a desire to speak publicly. I never had a desire to get on stage. In fact, when I was a little kid, I had trouble with comprehension and reading and, and, um, and articulating what I was saying. So I've really truly come a long way, but it wasn't like a deep seated desire. You know, some people desire for, you know, uh, to be seen, to be recognized, to be in Hollywood, to be on movies, to be, uh, you know, to do all these things. That was never a desire of mine. Uh, my desire came from God's uh, prompting that I needed to write this book. I've got important messages that he's given me, important experiences that I went through that others are supposed to be blessed by. And so, um, and so ironically enough, uh, fast forward, that was 2005 when I uh, had the prompting to write the book. Then I was given the visions of stadiums full of people where I had the opportunity to share my story. Fast forward to 2013. So 2005, 2013, quite a bit of a delay. Um, I was dating a girl for three years. We started dating in 2010. Then eventually, uh, 2013, I come to find out that she was unfaithful. Uh, she was sleeping around while I was out of town on, on, you know, building this other business, 
simultaneously, uh, when I found out that she was unfaithful, I also got a uh, swift kick to the you know what and uh, lost a half a million dollar a month business partnership that was literally paying me over 50,000 a month, which was feeding me, feeding my, feeding my team, feeding my family. So simultaneously, I got whacked with both of those situations. And um, through that, uh, it drove me back to a place where I, the only place I knew to turn was, was to God. And so I began to do exactly what I did, what happened when I, when I died and came back to life, when I was looking for my purpose, I went to the only place I knew to go, which was to God. I started praying. I started meditating. I started reading his word more. I started worshiping and a combination of those things. Um, as I was processing, how do I handle and deal with this situation? God began to then remind me, you need to man up, Brian. This is your opportunity to apply the formula that I've given you in 2005. But now you have a different perspective. You're going to apply this in a romantic relationship and in this business partnership uh, that is completely different than the experience that we went through together in 2005 with your dad. So that gave me a little bit of peace because I knew that it was a part of the bigger picture, the bigger narrative of my story that needed to happen so that I could relate to people who had gone through pain as it relates to intimate relationships and business partnerships. And so I went through it with my dad and then I eventually had to go through it with an intimate partner and then also went through it with uh, a business partnership. So Brian, you received this vision. You knew that you were supposed to write a book as early as 2005. It sounds like you didn't just sit down and start writing, but in those years you were building business, you were like building influence, you were moving forward in your calling, but it seems like a lot of people receive a, Hey, you're going to write a book. And they're like, okay, cool. I'm going to write a book tomorrow and publish it next year. You know, 2005 today, it's 2021. This has been a 16 year process. Um, after you had that forgiveness experience with, you know, your, your ex-girlfriend and your business partner, how did this book actually start to kind of come to life? Yeah. So it was, uh, actually in 2016, which happened another, another event happened in my experience, which was, um, I, I had a realization that my business person, my purpose and my spiritual purpose are one of the same. They're not disconnected or disjointed. And up until that point, right, I, I had this calling over my life uh, that I was supposed to share my story and help other people share theirs. And that's, um, you know, and then deeper than that, it's, you know, to go through this process of forgiveness uh, and transformation within relationships that, that truly allow you to, to break free from the chains that are holding you back. And so 2016, right, quite a, quite a few years after 2005, a couple years after 2013, when I had the, the fallout of my intimate partnership and my business partnership that was, you know, that was really scaling. Um, God sent me a guy who was a pastor and uh, he was on a mission to eradicate waterborne illness in the country of Liberia. And it was when I met him that I realized what I do as it relates to business is directly connected with what I, what my calling is spiritually. And that is to share your story and help other people share theirs. And I don't know why I didn't connect the dots until that point. Um, but until I connected those dots, I was scattered. I mean, I was chasing all types of shiny objects all over the place. And I remember very vividly that when I had that connection made, I then had resolve around my business and spiritual purpose being one and the same. And so I just went deeper. And as a result of that, my business took off like a rocket. We began winning awards. We began in crushing revenue goals. We began working with quality people, quality experts, um, authors, speakers, coaches, these type of people. And life changed dramatically. And, and I do contribute that to that, that defining moment, that realization of, my business purpose and my spiritual purpose are one and the same. They're not disconnected. They're not something that I need to do on Sunday and then do business the rest of the week, right? Which a lot of people operate in that place, right? They're like, well, I go to church on Sunday, maybe Wednesdays. They do like some spiritual things. I pray once a day. I read the scriptures, whatever it is. But they're like, it's not really that connected to what they do at work, right? And so they're, they're, they're pulled, feel like there's this tug of war that happens within their spirit. And 
I can tell you right now, that's the, that's the moment that I was at until 2016 uh, when I realized that, no, 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 the skill sets that I was accumulating around marketing, advertising, and selling online and offline, for that matter, um, were directly connected to helping people share their story and help them get it out in a bigger way. And business took off like a rocket. I ended up launching a campaign um, that was called the Free Golden Ticket that my wife brilliantly created. Uh, I asked her a question and she blurted out the words free golden ticket. Um, I asked her a very important question, which was, I want to give away some of our most valuable funnels along with more than just the funnels, but like what the, you know, the, the, the inside look of it, like the emails, the scripts, like the behind the scenes and then videos to go with it to really break down what a successful campaign looks like. Right. And so she blurted out free golden ticket. She had written a, a thesis paper on Willy Wonka and the chocolate factory. And so she was able to connect the dots before I was. And she began to show me this parallel between that movie and, and this campaign. And so we created this campaign. Uh, it was super successful through it. I actually attracted two ghostwriters to me. Um, that ended up saying, Hey, Brian, I love your, your story. I love your message. Um, I would love to help you get that out there to the world. And I want to do it for free. So it's amazing how God works, right? He, we launched a campaign and through that campaign, the idea was how do we stand out? How do we be different? How do we be unique than anyone in the market? And how do we get people's attention? Right. And, and we all have to do that when, when it comes to marketing, because in the, the day, there's a lot of stuff that's vying for our attention. Right. So. Um, we created this, you know, free golden ticket. I dressed up as Willy Wonka. My wife dressed up as a Loompa Loompa. We multiplied my wife. So there was m many Oompa Loompas. Uh, and we went all out. We did not, we did not half ass it. We went all out. My wife literally had to measure every part of her body for the spandex that she had to wear, uh, because a Loompa Loompa, basically the outfit was spandex. Um, and it, we, we didn't spare, um, it was as if it was like a Halloween costume. Uh, at the highest level, uh, and to the point where people even said, "Brian, you look like Gene Wilder," um, and, and I had never had that message. I had never heard that before. Um, <laughs> so what happened from there was um, I I had the first company uh, write the book, and I wasn't. It wasn't like it was good, but it wasn't great. It wasn't where um, it wasn't ready. And I wasn't sure why, but I was just like, didn't feel it in my spirit. I just felt like it was like half baked. And so another guy came to me, another ghostwriter who did a lot of um, fiction books. And so he was used to writing in full color. And so I said, I, so I had this idea, well, how about I take what, what's already been done, I'll give it to this new guy and then he'll write it and add color and, and, and uh, make it more vivid. Right. Because a lot of times autobiographies are boring, right? It's like factual, it's fact of matter, right? It's just like a lot of autobiographies are just kind of dry. Well, because of the importance of the message, because of the weight of it, because of the uh, importance of the, of the, the contents of, you know, that are within the pages of my book, um, I felt like we had to go above and beyond what a normal autobiography or, or that type of book would be written. And so I brought him in. Um, I was super happy with the outcome. Um, it took us another year to go through that process. <laughs> so we went like, I don't know, probably a year to go through the first process. Then we went through a whole nother year to go through that process again. Um, but uh, God was telling me that, you know, the most important book that I released to the world first was this book. And I was uh, years before when I was really given the vision back in 2005, it was like, this is the book I have to launch. I have to launch this first. Um, and it's got to be done well. It's got to be done well. And my mentor at Liberty University would always say, and his name is Jerry Falwell Sr. He founded Liberty University. He would always say, if it's Christian, it should be better. Um, and those words ring with me all the time. Um, and I, I agree with that. You know, we are called to a higher account. We're called to a higher standard. Um, and so... Um, Fast forward from there, uh, I had, we had, our, we got married, got married to my wife, uh, in La Jolla, California. Then we had our kid two weeks after getting married, boom, it's like we were pregnant. Um, and then it became even more evident, 
um, that the, the, the story that God was developing within me wasn't finished yet, right? Like I wasn't ready to publish the book in 2005. I wasn't ready to publish the book in 2010. I wasn't ready to publish the book in 2015, 2006. I, I wasn't ready to publish it until 2021 when we published it and launched it, right? And it's because there are milestones, there are parts of the story that would have been left out, right? I was able to dedicate the book to my daughter, right? If I would have launched the book in 2013, 15, 16, that would have never been possible, right? Um, here we are, you know, our, literally our second kiddo is on the way, uh, due soon, and we just launched the book to our internal audience. Um, and now we're at a place where it's time to really share it in a bigger way get the message out to as many people as possible. Yeah. Um, I think it's amazing. I mean, it's, a, it's been a 16 year work in progress. And I think so often people are obsessed with like, okay, cool. I got a vision. I got to do it now. How important do you think it's been to be patient and like, let the story kind of develop, let your own story develop over the last 16 years, as opposed to, you know, in 2005, you being like, okay, cool. You know, my purpose is to share my story with the world and share other people's stories. Like I'm going to get this book out and I'm going to start trying to get on stages everywhere. Like how, how necessary was the patience of it and just letting God do it in his timing as opposed to your timing? Yeah. So for me, it was, it was vital. I mean, looking back now, the book would not be thorough and completed as it is, right? It wouldn't be, it wouldn't have as much, as much depth to it, even though it's not a long book or a huge book, right? Um, it's, it's, it would have been not complete as it is now. So for me, absolutely critical. I think a lot of people get into a place where, um, they want to launch a book because they know that launching a book is going to allow them to position themselves differently in the market, or it's going to allow them to get clients. And I think, um, that's the wrong mindset as it comes to a book that has a really significant, um, significant stories, lessons, and meaning baked within it. Now, if it's a book that's, you know, that's, that's not that, then I say you don't have to spend as much time, energy, and attention to like go through that whole journey and that whole process. Or if you've already gone through that whole process and journey, then you can accelerate the process. But, you know, being that, you know, I died and came back to life in my early twenties. I didn't really start my business until my mid twenties. And then, you know, I had, I had to be, I had to go through experiences. I had to go through Good times, bad times, winning campaigns, losing campaigns. I had to go through a lot to, to get to the place where the book is able to be published. But I think a lot of times people go in with this mindset of, oh, I need to launch a book around this topic tomorrow. And it's really, in most cases, driven by monetary gain. Um, and, and that's the driving factor. And I'll tell you right now that you don't write a book for monetary gain um, because books don't really make a lot of money. Actually, they don't make any money. What makes money is your deeper levels of service, your coaching, your, your consulting, your mentorship, your services, your workshops, your courses, like those are the things that are going to allow you to monetize your expertise. A book is, is not necessarily going to do that as well. I mean, a book is what, 10, 20 bucks. So you're not going to be, get rich on books. Um, most authors are not, unless you're like, you know, a unicorn and become a Stephen King or, you know, some, prolific thing that takes off. Uh, but for most experts, 99.9% .9 of them are using a book uh, to communicate a message, communicate a story, to communicate an expertise. Um, that's very different. And then for me, it was just God impressed upon me the importance of the message and to not just wing it or throw mud up against the wall as it, there were, the book was not meant to have 14 renditions. <laughs> it was meant to be launched properly and strategically the right way so that when people read it, they go on a journey, they, they're, 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 they feel like they're in the experience with me as they're reading through it. And it's been amazing because even just in the past couple of weeks, I've heard that feedback from people who are reading it or listening to it because we have it in, in all forms of, of consumption, which whether it's paperback or Kindle or audiobook. But it's really cool to see, and we're only in the, the beginning stages of hearing how the book is, you know, really impacting people's lives and how it's captivating them to listen deeper, which a lot of books that, you know, that would be in this type of um, writing format not, don't normally get that type of feedback. Right. Yeah, it's amazing. So here, 
it's live, like tell, you know, our listeners how they can get the book. And then, you know, before we close this episode, I want to hear about the forward and why the forward to this book is, is one of the most special pieces. Yeah, absolutely. So you can go to launch expertise.com. So that's launch expertise.com or Brian which is my personal brand. And you'll find a place there to be able to get yourself a free copy. Now we say it's free, but we ask that you cover the cost of shipping and handling to get it to you anywhere in the United States for $9 and 95 cents. So that allows us to ship it and get it to your door. And, and if you're out of the country, then it's twenty nine ninety five. So if you're overseas, you're Australia, United Kingdom, Germany, wherever you might be outside the country, we will ship it to you, but it's twenty nine ninety five because that's the cost. It costs a lot more to ship it overseas than it does to ship it right. within the United States. So you're pretty much just now, asking people to help. You're printing the book and you're sending the book. That's pretty much it. You just want to get this message out there. That's correct. We're giving it away for free. We just ask that you cover the cost to get it to you so that I'm not coming out of pocket for that expense because it's a hard cost expense. Um, and one of the things I'm really so stoked about is the forward, like you mentioned, Seth. So really excited about uh, the forward. The forward's written by a friend of mine, a mentor of mine, a colleague of mine, Russell Brunson. Um, I was, I've known Russell for a long time. I've been I've been buying his products and services and, and stuff that he sold for more than a decade, far before ClickFunnels ever came into existence. Russell Brunson is the founder of ClickFunnels. The company's been evaluated at over uh, close to half a billion dollars, and he's working on getting it to the evaluation of a billion dollars as a brand. Um, he wrote the forward uh, because when I was masterminding uh, privately with Tony Robbins, Dean Graciosi, Jenna Kutcher, Lewis Howes, John Lee Dumas, like these people over in Florida in practically in Tony's backyard, I had uh, printed up 12 copies and I gave a copy to Russell. I gave a copy to Dean. I gave a copy to people, you know, strategic people in the mastermind that I wanted to, you know, to, to give a copy to, wrote a nice little note, signed it. Um, I let Russell, you know, read it for like a week and then I asked his blessing. I said, Hey man, uh, you know, would you be open to writing the forward for this book? I think out of everyone that I know, you're the best man for the job because of your background, your faith, your connection to God, um, uh, your, your family values, the systems that you operate as a family. And, uh, pretty quickly he was like, yeah, absolutely happy to do that. Now, um, you know, think about it though. Like I'm, this is not like, I didn't just meet Russell, right? Um, I've known Russell for a long time. I've been one of his top super affiliates for ClickFunnels, having generated over 600,000 in commissions, literally, you know, gave him over a million dollars worth of business. Um, and then, you know, being a top super affiliate for his partner, Tony Robbins, Dean Graciosi, helping them generate several, several million in revenue as well. So I served him first before ever asking him for the endorsement for the forward and, I think that's why he said yes is because, uh, you know, he's, we, we've been on this journey together, uh, for a long time, even before ClickFunnels was even a thing. It wasn't even called ClickFunnels when he first launched it. It was called something completely different. Um, so I've, I've, I have a long standing relationship with Russell. I think a lot of people, um, you know, think, oh, I need to get, a, I want to get a forward from Tony or I want to get a forward from this person. And it's like, you don't have any relationship. We haven't served them in any way you know, it's going to be challenging, you know, unless you have someone who has an in that can get the blessing. A lot of times, you know, Russell's not in the business of writing forwards, right? I mean, I, I only know a handful of people or less that Russell's ever even done that for. So I'm just, I'm grateful that he endorsed it. I'm grateful that he wrote the forward for it and the words that he wrote in it. Um, on my website, brianjelani.com, you can see his forward before even buying the book. Um, you can read through every word he said in the forward. And it was great to get his support, you know, um, because I've supported him so, so much over the years. It's like his way of supporting us. Right. Yeah. I think that's amazing. And, you know, we'll, we're going to have him on legacy builders one day too, and get to hear more of his perspective. But I think you're totally right that like his, uh, values being in, in God and in his faith, but also being in using business as a tool to build legacy as a tool to share people's stories. Uh, couldn't have been a better person for the job. So 
I think it's yeah. amazing that we're talking about this. And after, you know, 16 years, the book is live. People can get a copy. It's free. They can get a signed copy, an audio book. Um, so before we go, one last time, just tell people where they can get the book today. Yeah. So if you go to launch expertise.com, that's the short path to get there. Um, and then from there, you'll have a place that you can go over, grab a copy of the book. You can get the audio book. There's also a bump offer or a pre-checkout offer of some of our award-winning funnels, emails, and scripts. You can get that as well. I would encourage you to at least get the, um, the free copy. Uh, better yet, grab the audio bump or audio book for an additional 37 bucks. And you can start listening to it literally right now today uh, in minutes from p placing your order. And then we'll ship the book and then you'll get the book and, um, you know, but you can start today. You don't have to wait. Like you can get the book and then it will ship it, you know, to wherever you tell us to ship it to. And then you can also listen to the audio book starting today. Awesome. Well, Brian, this has been great. Thanks so much. And to everybody listening, we'll see you on the next episode of Legacy Builders. Thank you for joining me on Legacy Builders. And I would encourage you to come back to the next episode next week to get more clarity on your journey to launch your expertise online, scale your impact, and build your legacy. If you're ready to get the process started of launching your expertise online the right way, then I recommend go to launchexpertise.com or maybe you're at a place where you're ready to really scale your expertise and your impact. Go to launchexpertise.com. There you'll have several options. Number one, you can get a free copy of my brand new book, The Entrepreneur Evangelist, which I share the secrets that have unlocked more than $300 million of results for my clients and partners in our own campaigns. You could also join a 33 days of coaching with me uh, that's free, where I give you insights and wisdom on your journey to launching your expertise and scaling your impact over the course of 33 days. And that's worth at least 5,000 bucks, but for right now, you can get it for free. And lastly, if you're someone who wants to take the absolute faster, smarter path when it comes to launching your expertise online and scaling your impact, I'd recommend scheduling a call with my team where we can see how we can support you to crush goals and generate seven or eight figures yourself in a short period of time. We have more awards than nearly anyone in the entire community and for good reason. And we would love to help you just like we've helped them. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Legacy Builders.